Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco, here for a special Halloween edition of the show. Alright, so, now that you've probably stopped laughing, we're going to do three wines. This is the first for 1337 Wine TV. They're all themed for Halloween. We'll start with the first one. This is Vampire. And it's so dark, I can't even see the... <laughs> I can't even see the vintage. Anyway, uh, it was bought at World Market for $8.99. You should be able to see it pretty well there. Uh, this is 2007 Pinot Noir Vin de Pays from Vampire Vineyards. And it's from the dock. It's not poured into the candle. That would be bad, okay? place right there. I have my handy dandy, whatchamacallit, flashing goblet, flashing wine glass. Alright, so, get a little serious now. So I smell some uh, kind of bright red fruits. Not too bright. Cherries. Get some cherries out of it. Maybe some blood red cherries. Actually not bad. It's got a little bit of a bite to it. And yes, I just realized I made a pun. Um, a little bit of spice. I know it's the whole setting and all that, but it, 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 not that you would taste blood in a wine, but it's very vampiric. Um, it, it's got a bit of tartness to it, not sour, but a little tartness to it. Maybe a sour cherry aspect. I, I, I think it's pretty darn good, actually. For nine bucks, actually it's nine ninety nine. It was the uh, ten yeah, percent off. Nine ninety nine at World Market for a wine that's really just kind of funny to uh, to buy. It's not that bad, especially if you're going to do a Halloween type of thing, and if you've already bought it. So obviously, I'm not telling you to buy this yet because you're seeing this on Halloween. So if you bought it tomorrow or Monday, it's kind of Past its, you know, past the point of, uh, you know, making the point of buying a vampire wine, but it's not bad. Um, it's a little, it's a little juicy, as in like, like juice. It's got a little bit of sweetness, not much tannins. It's not bad. I'd probably give it in. Our normal circumstance, probably an 84 for nine for ten bucks, nine bucks. It's okay. So uh, let's move on to the next wine. This wine, which I think is going, this label is going to get uh, washed out from the light there. But um, if you can't quite tell, this is the. I don't think there's a vintage for this one. <laughs> This is a Pinot, it's called Pinot Evil. This is a, uh, Pinot, another Pinot Noir, a Vin de Pays de Lyle de Bon. So I am assuming um, Lyle de Butte, Lyle de Butte. So another French wine, and it doesn't show to have a vintage. So non-vintage, 
and if something changes, you'll see it down below. Now this one, this one's the cheap one, four ninety nine. World Market. I'm sure you can see the theme going on here. Decided to. I bought all these at the beginning of the month when I bought all the wine, so hence why you keep seeing the same one or the same uh, supplier, World Market. And that's how I buy the wine. I usually buy the wine all at once from one place. So that's why you keep seeing World Market, World Market, World Market, or HEB Plus, HEB Plus, or whoever, Costco. So uh, though I, I get, some, I've been uh, mixing it up the past couple weeks. So let's check it out. We got another Pinot Noir from France. Not much on the nose on this one. And all these have been open for about three hours. A little bit longer, I think, because it's just after 10 o'clock at night. I swear I got like a bubble gum aspect, but that was like a fleeting moment. For the most part, I smell nothing off of this thing. Instead of Pinot Evil, it's more like Pinot Bouquet. So, not looking good so far, but for five bucks, what do you expect, right? I think still with cherries, but for the most part. Man, I know it's a completely different varietal. It's not Gamay, but it makes me think of a Beaujolais, like a Beaujolais Nouveau, like pretty basic wine. I think we need to chop that one off. Um, score? I don't know. I'd say it's seventy-five. Seventy-five. It's a five-dollar wine. What do you expect? It's easy drinking. No tannins. What you know? So it's no tannins to speak of. So it's really easy drinking. It's. I mean, as far as a wine itself, I don't think it's really that good of a wine, but I can see people drinking it, like at a Halloween party, or just as a party wine that you want to bring to somebody's place, you don't want to bring like really expensive wine, and everyone's going to be like, oh, God, it's cute, Pinot Evil, oh, with the little three monkeys on it. Yeah, and they're not going to notice it's really not that good of a wine. It has a little bit of sweetness, but it's really watery. So, yeah, not so much on that one. Next. Now, this one. This one, all of you have probably seen somewhere along the line. Put it up there where you can see. Evil. Of course, upside down, it's live, or backwards, it's live. Um, this, I also believe, is a non-vintage wine, though I have to double-check that. No, it's actually a 2007. And this is a Southeastern Australian Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this label I've seen for quite a few years. You know, the, they got the little play on. It's from Down Under. It's a, you know, now that I remember, it's from Down Under, so it was upside down. And you, you know, you've got all that little thing. So uh, this has been around, I, I know, for a few years. I've seen it. I've heard about it. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it as far as like, quality, but you know, I've seen the thing. So we shall see if it's worth anything. Uh, bought it for eight ninety nine. Get the little action there. Uh, don't want to put my hand over the candle too much. That's not actually not too hot. Uh, eight ninety nine. World market again. I'm digging this thing. I mean, like the whole set. Was a Horatio, something like that. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, by far, so far, on, on the nose, this is definitely the best of the three. So I'm getting dark berries off of it. A little cherry, but I'm thinking more... More blackberries. Blackberries, raspberry type of thing. Not necessarily cherry. Not bad. So far, it looks good. Okay, so definitely much better. This is the best of the three. Um, it's got a bit of jamminess to it. Um, I, I kind of got a bit of a bit of that jamminess. Um, it's got some tannins, not a lot, but it's got you know it's got a decent amount of tannins. 2007 Australian wine. We're almost to 2010, so it's you know a three-year wine. Almost three, you know, three and a half year wine. <laughs> Definitely tasty. Um, I'm still getting the, the the blackberry jamminess out of it. Um, it's not overly sweet, but for a Cabernet, it, it doesn't really hit you very. It is. It is not bold enough. It's really not the bold. I mean, it's, it's the best of the three, and I know I scored that that uh, first one, the Vampire Wine. Uh, what did I score? Like an 80, 384, something like that. Uh, I give this an eighty six. Uh, I would say if you're going to buy a wine to bring somewhere for a party. And you know, with with a little play on the on the the little um, Halloweeny type stuff, this is probably your best bet uh, wine wise because it has more structure to it. It's a better wine. You've got some tannins. Uh, I wouldn't say firm tannins. You got some tannins, but it, it pretty much disappears quickly. You got the dark cherries. And that's going away. So, I'll still stick with the score. Uh, kind of as a relative score. Um, I think it's, good. it's a good play on words. I think, I think people will enjoy it if they don't think too hard about it. Make sense? I think so. So, uh, you notice that yesterday we didn't have an episode uh, because I decided to not do two in a row. Uh, that episode will now be Monday's episode. Um, totally bought these wines because they were uh, put in order of preference here. Bought them really because of the names because I knew I was going to do a Halloween type show and I wanted to have a little fun and, and see what World Market did. They had like they put a whole bunch of wines together and they had more, uh, but I didn't want to go completely overboard, especially because I, I kind of had the feeling I was going to do all three at the same time. Uh, that I might have uh, decided to do uh, to do it like this instead of one at a time, and um, a lot of fun. What else we got going on? Uh, let's see. Click the links. Friend me up. I was just seeing where I was on time. Um, plenty. And um, friend me up. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, uh, anything in the marketplace. Definitely do that. Uh, sommelier school. Uh, <clears throat> if all goes well, I've done all my research today, you know, as in Saturday, and I should be recording it on Sunday morning to be up Sunday night. Um, if not, it'll be into the, into the following week. I'm still getting used to the whole schedule and how things are working out. Sommelier school takes a long time to really formulate and, and research. It's, it's a 10 to 12 hour process in, in total. So, um, Whereas, you know, doing a wine review, uh, the, the majority of, of the research usually takes 30 minutes and then it takes, you know, 10 minutes or, or less to record the episode. Um, what else? What else? Uh, 
on Twitter, you'll notice a lot of times I'm not tweeting very much. Uh, you'll get those automatic tweets, and, and I do apologize, but it's uh, somebody said something about, well, all your tweets sound the same. Well, think of Twitter like a radio. It's like radio. The, uh, some of my tweets are commercials to, hey, come to my website, you know, like some of these other guys do. But I do try to be engaging when I can, when I'm not doing uh, the, quote, day job. Um, so when you don't see me on there, other than those normal automatic tweets, which, you, which you, in a 12-hour period you should only see maybe two or three of them, um, obviously I'm not able to uh, go out and be tweeting at the time because I'm a little busy. But when I'm not working, I do try to engage with everybody because that's part of Twitter. You need to engage. You need to talk to the people. And I try to have you know conversations with everybody. Uh, feel free to email me um, if you're interested in doing a Skype tasting. Uh, I've got some other people that are line, you know, trying to line them up. They're interested. Uh, hopefully, next week I'll be getting a phone call from somebody. We keep like missing each other. I'm missing each other. But are, our schedules aren't meshing as far as getting that initial phone call to set things up and kind of talk about what we need to do. If you're a winemaker that's that's emailed me but hasn't followed up, what are you waiting for? We got uh, we all we gotta do is just pick a date. Uh, I'll clear my I'll clear my schedule for you know any days that I'm not that I'm able to do it, and we'll set it up. And that, my friends, means we are done. So with that said, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see everybody again next time.